Welcome to this virtual Bible study offered through St. John's Evangelical Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Patrick Ernst. We're going to be continuing our study of the book of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles, although um, ultimately the Acts of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. And uh, we are in Paul's third missionary journey. We'll be beginning in Acts chapter 19. Before we begin, uh, let us join our hearts in prayer. Heavenly Father, as uh, there are so many uncertainties in our world and in our lives, we uh, pray that you would speak the comfort of your gospel to us. Just as you show us in the past how your uh, gospel broke through so many barriers of uh, unbelief and resistance to you, so also take away the barriers of unbelief that remain in us, uh, the barriers of our challenges and doubts and fears, and speak to us your powerful word of grace and life. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. As I said, we'll uh, be beginning in Acts chapter 19, but before we begin the study proper, I want to just cover um, a preliminary note. Uh, as in the last video, I will not be reading the Bible passages as we go along. I'll be giving you the uh, Bible reference, and then if you'd like to pause the video and read it on your own, you may. Uh, a tool for doing that, though, is um, this website called Bible Gateway. Um, you can see here, BibleGateway.com. Put that into your uh, search bar, and it'll bring up this website. You can choose from a myriad different Bible translations, many, many English ones, as well as uh, translations into other languages. So you select your translation. You can just type in the verse reference. Um, we'll be in Acts chapter 19, so you can pull up the whole chapter, or if you want just a range of verses, you can um, just do that, and it'll isolate those verses for you. Now, the final tool I want to make you aware of is um, there's an audio Bible version here, which is completely free. So um, you just hit the audio icon, and it'll bring up a recording of um, the various chapters. Um, now, you can't go verse by verse. Uh, with the recording, but you can sort of skip through the recording to find exactly where you want to be. So uh, as we're going through this study, if you find this useful, if you want to read the scriptures online or even have the audio uh, capability, feel free to make use of that. Okay, so we return to our study. You can see here the uh, uh, references and questions in, uh, first of all, chapter 19, verses 8 through 10. So you can go ahead and read those verses now. A bit of review first on Paul's third missionary journey. Uh, we talked about last time how this isn't a pure missionary journey in that uh, Paul is returning to some churches he had already established. So it's not that he's going to new places all the time and uh, starting new churches. Uh, but what he's doing, first of all, is building them up, strengthening them in their faith, encouraging them, clarifying questions. There was a question about baptism uh, that Paul answered and also binding these congregations together um, in a larger fellowship uh, by traveling from one to another. And we still do all of this today. You know, if we have questions as um, a church, we turn to experts and uh, people who have a lot of experience in not only studying the scriptures, uh, but also in, you know, ministering to people and they know um, how Christianity works practically. Um, and we also bind ourselves to other congregations uh, to strengthen each other. Uh, we are a member congregation of the Evangelical Lutheran Synod. And the word synod comes from two Greek words uh, that combined kind of mean walking together. Uh, so we are, you know, different congregations walking together in faith here to support and encourage each other. Uh, so all of this activity still goes on today. Okay, so the first question uh, regarding these verses is um, what name is used for Christianity here? Um, did you notice there's kind of an interesting name used for the Christian faith? And that name is the way. The way is an early name for Christianity, possibly originating from John chapter 14, where Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life. So the way is, first of all, a reference to Christ. We could also apply it and say, yeah, Christianity is the way to eternal life. It's the way to heaven. Jesus is the way to the Father. 
to the true God. Um, also, as far as our Christian living goes, Christianity is the way that we live our lives. Um, it's the right way as opposed to the many different wrong ways, the ways that we can be misled. Um, this term for Christianity is only found in the book of Acts, interestingly, but it's used quite common in this book, or quite uh, frequently in this book, and it appears as if this was a, a commonly known title for Christianity. In chapter 24, Paul uses this term, the way, to refer to the Christian faith when he's talking to a Roman governor. So obviously even the Romans uh, heard about the way, uh, referring to the Christian movement. Question two, how long did Paul stay in Ephesus, and how did the word spread in that time? So we're told here that um, what he was doing, um, teaching, continued for two years. Uh, we learn later that it was actually more like three, but from this point on, you know, it was two years that he continued teaching. And the word spread by going out from the city of Ephesus, kind of a central um, city, uh, into the surrounding region. It says all the residents of Asia um, heard the word of the Lord, both Jews and Greeks. So from this central kind of crossroads, um, trading post, important city, yeah, things spread out. And that's a movement that we see in other places too. Okay, now we're going to jump ahead um, over some events that take place in the city of Ephesus. Feel free to read those if you'd like. And we're going to go to the beginning of chapter 20. So go ahead and either read or listen to chapter 20, verses 1 through 16 now. All right, at the beginning of chapter 20, we have a difference in a uh, person that's referenced in the, uh, in the narrative. Okay, we go from third person, the author of this book referring to um, he they, to first person plural, talking about we and us. Now it's important uh, to answer this next question. Who isn't named uh, but seems to join up with Paul again in Macedonia? Well, the clue there is the change in person. It goes from they and he to we and us. So obviously the person relaying this history seems to join up with Paul. And that person we know is Luke. Luke, who wrote the gospel, is the one who also writes the book of Acts. And with this change in person, he's indicating that he has now joined the, the entourage of Paul. Okay, going to verse 7. What custom of worship is already in place this early on in the Christian church? And Actually, there's more than one. So take a look at verse or chapter 20, verse 7, and, and think to yourself, what uh, custom of worship that we have today is already in place here. The main one I would like to point out is on the first day of the week, the Christians meet. That means Sunday. This early in the Christian church, Sunday is set aside as the main day when Christians meet. And of course, even though Christians meet on uh, different days of the week, um, Sunday is, is the main one. Although a couple other customs we could pick out is, first of all, uh, they gather together to break bread, which uh, probably refers first to a fellowship meal, uh, which we, of course, still do, but then kind of by extension, uh, the Lord's Supper. Finally, it says that Paul prolonged his speech until midnight. So we have a Sunday service with fellowship, the Lord's Supper, and preaching. So already, kind of this core um, framework of Christian worship is uh, in place, one that we still find today. All right, um, what's your reaction to Eutychus um, or Eutychus uh, dying and coming back to life? So this young man is listening to um, Paul preach as Paul's kind of going on and on. It's getting late. Um, Eutychus falls out of a window that he's, you know, sitting in and dies. And then Paul goes and brings him back to life. So what's your reaction to um, that story? If you want to pause and discuss it with whoever you're studying with or just to think about it, go ahead and do so. Um, here's a few of my, my thoughts. Okay. 
First of all, uh, Paul looms so large in uh, early Christian history. He was chosen by God to preach the gospel, to write all these books of scripture. And yet, um, you know, pe people could be put to sleep by his preaching <laughs> if he went on too long. Um, so first of all, we should recognize uh, that um, uh, there are barriers to God's word found, first of all, in the preacher, which I can definitely identify with. You know, I, I don't perfectly get out of the way and let God's word work, but I always have some of my own boring self and, you know, inefficient talking patterns that uh, make people want to fall asleep when I preach. But um, there's also the element in the hearer. I think this is kind of a an interesting illustration of both spiritual and physical life being um, kind of compared to each other. So Eutychus falls asleep while Paul is preaching. That has a certain physical element to it. You know, we humans have limited uh, attention spans, and so we need to be aware that we should be paying attention when things are important. But there's also a spiritual aspect to this. You know, just as Satan, the devil, doesn't want us to have life, he doesn't want us to have any good thing, he, he would love to see us fall out of a window and die, so too he wants us to find God's word boring. He wants us to think it's, it's the thing that just makes us fall asleep and, uh, yeah, the preacher just drones on and on because that means God isn't able to do his work on us if we're not really listening to his word. So uh, just as Eutychus, you know, in his human weakness, you know, not that he was like sinning by falling asleep. I mean, it got late. Uh, but just as Eutychus, you know, sort of drifted off and wasn't hearing Paul anymore. Um, and that inclination in humans can really cause spiritual death. So too, he actually then just falls out of the window and uh, physically is killed and then brought back to life. Um, so within this story where we might just see Paul performing a, a miracle, uh, there are some spiritual lessons to be learned about um, our own weaknesses as preachers or as hearers when it comes to God's word and yet what power God's word has, just as the power of God's gospel spoken through the sinner Paul uh, could bring spiritual life, so too Paul was able to bring Eutychus back to life. Okay, um, chapter 20, verse 16 Notice that a church year has always been part of Jewish and Christian life. Paul says that he was hastening to be at Jerusalem so that if possible, he could be there for Pentecost. Um, in the life of the nation of Israel, God gave festivals to the people to point them back to works that God had done on their behalf. So uh, there was the harvest festival of um Israel, which actually Pentecost was. So to point them back to the great work of providing that God did for them year after year. Um, there was a festival to commemorate the wandering in the wilderness. Of course, the Passover commemorates um, their salvation out of slavery in Egypt and pointed ahead to a savior. So throughout the Old Testament, there is a liturgical church year with different festivals at different times of the year. And so we should see that our way of having a liturgical church year is not something new. It's not something that we innovated. It's really just keeping the same pattern of establishing festivals so we too can commemorate for ourselves and for our children those acts of God for us in the past, right? We celebrate Christmas when God took on human flesh in the person of Jesus Christ. We celebrate Easter when Christ uh, rose from the dead. Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit, and other festivals too, um, to show how God has been so gracious to us through the work of his Son, first and foremost, but also through the work of the church. Um, we celebrate um, and commemorate certain Christians on certain days, remembering their lives of faith and, you know, thanking God for their contributions. Okay, um, we're just about up on time for this video, but uh, I'll be back on and we'll um, pick up in chapter 20 and uh, continue through Paul's uh, third missionary journey.